Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Hey, you know that we all need water to live, and bourbon, of course, just kidding, but how long do you have to boil water to, for it to be safely drinkable? Well, you ask a bunch of survivalists, you get a bunch of answers. The important question is in a survival situation where water and fuel might both be limited, how much boiling is actually required? There are all sorts of disease-causing microbes, also called pathogens, that are harmful to humans and can be found in water. Protozoa, bacteria, and viruses. The protozoa include Giardia and Cryptosporidium, that's a real nasty one. Harmful bacteria include Salmonella, Shigella, which causes dysentery, and E. coli, and viruses that are water contaminants include things like Hepatitis, Enterovirus, and another nasty one, Norovirus. There are various ways to disinfect water. Bleach is popular, iodine will work, and UV using direct sunlight on clear bottles of water for a good eight hours is another way. Of all the ways that you can disinfect water, however, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, recommends boiling as the best method. They have an excellent PDF, by the way, that you can download called Drinking Water Treatment Methods for Backcountry and Travel Use. The CDC believes that none of the methods other than boiling, however, are 100% effective in killing all disease-causing bugs. Even bleach takes several days to kill some organisms like cryptosporidium, something we talked about on the Survival Medicine podcast a few months ago. Of course, the CDC and I suggest that cloudy water should be filtered in some way. You can improvise a filter, but some popular commercial lightweight filters include the Mini Sawyer and the Life Straw, which you can find on our store. Now here's a fun fact. How much wood does it take to boil one liter of water? It takes one kilogram of wood. That's 2.2 pounds of wood, wood fuel to boil one liter, just one quart, essentially 1.06 quarts of water. And how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a good woodchuck could chuck wood? Well, heck if I know, but I digress. Disinfection means the removal or destruction of harmful pathogens. If you are alone in the woods with nothing but a fire starter, boiling, of course, is an effective option. Freezing, on the other hand, doesn't kill bacteria, just prevents them from multiplying. As soon as the water warms, the bacteria will begin multiplying again. Now, having said that, if you get two pots of water and you freeze one, leave the other one at room temperature, the frozen water will certainly have less bacteria in it than the room temperature water. But it's not the same as killing the bacteria. How long should water be boiled? I had a good discussion of this with Eric of the Woodman's Journal online blog just recently. Some say that water should be brought to a roiling boil for about three minutes. Some say five minutes, some say 10 minutes, some say even longer. However, the CDC and the World Health Organization have both shown that this is not necessary. And for survival purposes, I think it's wasteful from the standpoint of fuel consumption and time. Thinking of survival scenarios, the smoke from a fire to boil water might give away your position to others in hostile areas, even if you use things like a Dakota fire hole. Eric noted that the backpacker's field manual states that water temperatures above about 160 degrees Fahrenheit will kill most if not all pathogens within 30 minutes and at 185 degrees just a few minutes. Neither of these is boiling temperature, which at sea level is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you manage to get water to boiling, you've already passed the temperatures that kill just about every pathogen. It should be noted that, according to the National Institute of Health, some viruses are resistant to heat and may require longer times at sub-boiling temperatures, uh, viruses like poliovirus, for example. If most microbes die before water gets to boiling, why boil water? Well, in survival settings, that's an easy one to answer. A good boil is a simple, recognizable sign that doesn't require special temperature monitoring materials. According to the CDC, heating water to a roiling boil for one minute at sea level has high effectiveness, quote unquote, in killing protozoa such as Giardia and Cryptosporidium, which is resistant even to bleach, by the way, bacteria like E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, and others that I mentioned in our book, Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, as well as viruses such as Enterovirus, Hepatitis A, and Norovirus. The temperature to boil water is dependent on the altitude that you're at. It's thought that for every 500 foot increase in elevation, the temperature required goes down by just under a degree Fahrenheit. Now, why does this happen? As water heats, there is a point at which it begins to change to a gas. This is known as the boiling point. 
At sea level, when water reaches 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees centigrade, it begins to turn to steam or vapor. Once this point is reached, the water can't get any hotter. This process is different from evaporation, which takes place just at the surface of the water. Boiling takes place within the entire volume of water. The vapor being produced in the water causes something called vapor pressure. The pressure fights the pressure of the atmosphere that's pressing down upon it. So water can't release the vapor, that is boil, until the vapor pressure can overcome the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude, so the temperature required to make steam decreases as well. At elevations above 2,000 meters, that's 6,562 feet, three minutes of additional boiling are recommended by the CDC to ensure that the water has remained hot enough for long enough to destroy all risky bugs. Some of you may have learned to bring water to a rolling boil for a minute at sea level and boiling it for an additional minute for every thousand feet, that's 305 meters, above sea level. This is how I was first taught, and even if it's not the standard, honestly, I don't think you can go wrong using that method as well. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to fill those holes in your medical storage by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits, books, and more at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.